Welcome to this next GSB video on entry types. The purpose of this video is to show the different types of entries, the settings to be used, and why this is important because the bottom line is it's going to give you better out of sample results and you'll build systems faster. The prerequisites of this video is that you've looked at the methodology and had a quick read of it, or later on there'll be a video that outlines what's documented here in the video. But if you haven't seen that, a lot of this video is going to be harder to understand. You can look at the URLs shown here, which show you how to reach that documentation. Oversimplifying things, what's really important is that the totals of C, D, E, F which are out of sample results are as high as possible and you'll see with the various entry types that we're using those totals will vary a lot and we need to maximize that. We're going to start by first explaining the GSB architecture. We're going to start that very oversimplified and get down to much more specifics and show what it truly is deep in the heart of GSB. The first thing we do is to normalize all the indicators. This means that they are put within a range of minus 100 to plus 100 regardless of their actual value. So here you can see an indicator ranging from about 30 to 80 and when it's normalized it ranges from minus 100 to plus 100. This is compare one entry type if the oscillator is multiplied together, and again that's an oversimplification, are above the entry level, and secondary filter is true, then we'll trade. This will produce lots of systems, it'll produce them easily and quickly, and they'll tend to be poor quality systems. This is compare to entry method. It requires the oscillators combined to be above the entry level and it requires that to happen for two consecutive bars. Again fairly easy to find systems but they're not quite as good out of sample as some of the other entry methods. This is entry crossover. Note it's symmetrical long and short. It requires an oscillator to cross over the value of entry level. This is crossover single level. This is not symmetrical in the fact that there is a bias to long or short, but there's only one variable here. Note the plus on the entry level. On the standard crossover, that operand is a negative. This is crossover dual entry level. There's a separate variable for long entries and a separate variable for short entries. These are the operators and combination of operators that can be used in GSB. I would have expected that addition is the best operand. However, I found multiplication tends to work best. This is very much oversimplified how we use weights in GSB. These are the walk forward weights. You can change all weights at once by selecting them all you can see how they're in blue, and then typing in the numbers you require. So we allow it to go to zero on a walk forward. This is a wider range than when we're building systems. And if we're zero, if we're using plus, it means it will disable that particular indicator. And should we see that in a walk forward, it means we've got an invalid indicator. In a multiplication, when we're using something to the power of, if we see a zero there, we know that we've got an indicator that's not used because it will simplify to a one. I'm now going to explain an architectural problem that occurs when we use multiply. Basically, if you multiply two negative numbers together, you get a positive. And GSB would then think that the trend is up when it's actually down. The solution starts by using the sine function. It basically gives a 1, 0, or minus 1, depending on if the number is above, below, or equal to 0. 
The solution is to use weight mode, sine power. There's a problem now with weights in the fact that they don't actually give weighting for a specific oscillator when we have three of them combined using multiply. The fix for the weight issue is basically to use to the power of weight rather than multiplied by weight. Now here's a completely different type of entry technique. Any indicator can cross entry level and then we'll trade. So this doesn't use the operators of plus, minus, multiply and divide, but one has to be entered into GSB. Note any indicator cross uses the weights or the values of the weights completely differently. In the previous examples, weights were from 0 or 0.5 to 2, step 0.25, while as here they're in the minus 20 to plus 20 range, or when we walk forward, the minus 30 to plus 30 range. No conflict cross, again, is very similar to any indicator cross, and we're probably going to make some new variations of this one too. I'm now going to show how all indicator types used at once with all entry types compared to using the entry types individually. And you can see this total 8977 from proving the methodology that corresponds in the Excel spreadsheet to the 8976. So we can see our benchmark of all the 2005 to 2018 periods came to 8939. That's an average of the top 250 systems, the top 90 systems with high anchored walk forward stability results, and high verification score. If we compare to any indicator cross and no conflict cross, they came to the 89 and 8600. The entry compare types came to a abysmal 5300 and I did two identical tests and it's good to show the amount of variation you can still get on identical tests and this was using the cross indicators which was single cross, dual cross and just plain cross and that came to 91 and 9500. I'm now going to show some statistical analysis and the problem with the statistical analysis in some cases. So I'm going to select all systems like this, export parameters to, and I've got clipboard tab separated, OK. So I'm going to paste this into Excel, and all I need to do is do Control V. So the entry mode, we are using all possible methods shown in this video. So I'm going to just delete the word entry mode. And if I hold my mouse over here, you can see that there's a count of 250 systems. If I sort those on column L, I can see that any indicator cross gave me 106 systems. There were three cross systems. No conflict cross. There were 133 systems, so that's the most common. And cross single level, there was one. Now, our result showed that the cross dual or single levels or plain cross were the best entry methods, but how come we're seeing a strong bias to no conflict cross? The reason is no conflict cross is a little bit worse than the entry crosses, but it's so much easier for the genetic algorithms to find them. What's even easier is the compare methods, but because they don't work as well, genetic algorithm didn't find them as often. So that's why when you do these tests, it's not good to use entry techniques as the lot. You need to isolate them individually to see what one's going to work best for the particular market and setup that you've got. The other issue is that no conflict cross and any indicator cross 
use different weighting range of variables compared to the crossover methods. Thanks for watching this video. Please remember to like it to help promote GSB if you believe in the product and keep an eye out for more videos about GSB.